I've been noticing lately that a lot of new players who escaped from Tarkov have been wanting some help and a guide to how in the world to play this game and how to work the quests. So in this new series of Escape from Tarkov Beginner's Guide Let's Play, we will go through every single quest that you'll have to go through. What is up ladies and gentlemen my name is Halfman, and welcome to the newest series on our channel the escape from Tarkov beginner's guide let's play where we're gonna pretty much go through basically what you're gonna be going through the first time starting the game we're gonna go through all the quests all the items you're gonna need the hideout what that's all about traders and even the fleet markets this is a full play run through using every single thing to our ability and today we're gonna do something a little different we're gonna use the same name half man but we're gonna put a let's play behind it Hopefully that'll work. It will. Now normally this right here, this is going to be where you select your character. Either you go for a bear or a Usec. Normally I do always go for bear. Today we're going to go Usec. Now your account may be a little bit different. The one that I am playing on is what's called Edge of Darkness. This is the, the big bundle, the big, big amount, expensive one that you can pay for. I've had this basically since the beginning of the, the game coming out. So don't mind this stuff if you don't have it. Just kind of where we're starting at. Uh, you may also notice down below in your in your stats you're going to have either a gamma container or an alpha container. If you're starting with an alpha container, it only really means you're going to have a smaller space and you're also going to have about right about right here for space on storage. Get to work. Don't worry about that. If that's what you're working towards, we'll go over how you can upgrade that and work towards uh, well getting a bigger, better stash, kind of like how it is here. Now, you're going to start with some money. I believe the standard account starts about 300000 which is still a good amount of money. I usually typically suggest the first thing to do would be to go over to your hideout. Get this going because there's something that's going to be needed. We're going to have to upgrade two parts. We need to do... Actually, which is the generator tech? We'll go all the way down to... The generator requires security. So we need, a, we need to get the generator, which is normally located right here. We can unlock security first, so we'll construct that. That takes 20,000. Generator is going to be 100,000. It's 120,000 used so far. Come over here. Medication is med medication is where we're going to go to. We're going to upgrade this as well. So we have in total that you use 140,000 rubles. There's a reason behind this, and we'll go over it. Now that we've gotten the hideout selected and finished, what we want to actually create right now, we need to go to the traders. Traders here are going to do a few different things. They're going to give you items, but they also give you quests. Quests they are going to allow you to progress through the game and at some point be able to complete them all and get a very nice prize from our friend Fence here, but we'll go at that at a later date. Now, they all different different things. Prepper, well, it gives you different guns, ammunition. Therapist is going to give you all of your lovely medical supplies and some other nice containers down the road. Fence is kind of like the flea market, except he gives you... Very random items. Very, very random items. Obviously, if you're just starting for the first time, these are all going to be blacked out like they are for us now, which means you've never examined them before, and you need to well, go out and find them and examine them. Skier here is going to give you a variety of different... A lot of times, a lot of shotguns, ADARs, stuff like that. You also have some really nice attachments down the road. Peacekeeper is going to be the one that actually works with dollar bills, not just rubles, but dollar bills. It'll give you kind of like more of the U.S. type of weapons. You'll have MP5s, you'll get M4s. There's a really nice lot of stuff as well. Uh, mechanic. Mechanic is your gun guy. He has many different type of gun trades, attachments, and his quests have to do a lot of, well, tech and also weapons. I'm going to go over to Ragman. Ragman is your armor guy. He's going to have a different armor. Pretty much you can select it and you can buy it. And then it's going to be nice protection for you. Go over that as well. Jaeger. Jaeger is a different one. Once we unlock him, we'll talk to him and talk about him and go from now. If you're new, uh, a lot of people, a lot of you guys are gonna probably end up right clicking this and pressing inspect. But you can't see what it is. So make sure you do examine first. Examine is gonna allow you to see what the actual item is. You also get some XP down there in the bottom right hand corner as well. So it's a little bit nice. A little bit nice there. Now, a little bit easier and faster way to do this is hit the middle mouse button. Press it in. And he examines it. It's a lot faster, especially when you're inside the raid and you're on a kind of a time crunch and possible people coming after you. 
you have to examine it real quick, either get inside your bag or attach the weapon. Especially magazines, make sure you examine every single magazine that you can because it will probably save your life at the end. Now, the two we're going to be focusing on today is going to be Praport and Therapist. These two are going to give you your first starting quest, Debut, which requires you to kill five scavs and also get two MP-133 shotguns. Therapist is going to require you to give five Sailawas. Now, now with the Sailawas, this is a little bit different uh, than uh, some other quests. For us on the Sailawa quest, we can turn these in a few different ways. We can either invite them in the raid or we can also do what we upgrade in here, which was go to the med station. Click on the start button if we have one painkiller, one bandage, and one split, which will create one sale of in 22 minutes. You do that every 22 minutes, you get all five of them done. That's a great way to do it. If you were, say, level 10, you could go off at the flea market and buy those items as well. But well, hopefully, we'll have this way done way before level 10 and uh, move on from there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, too, is that you'll sometimes have quests that won't say that. Now, for example, like I said, with this one, it says find five Sailor kits, you turn them in. If it were to say find five Sailor kits in raid, then you have to find them in a raid. Now, it seems simple, easy. If you find it, oh, I've got this container here. Now, this container here is, is special where it, whatever you put into it, you keep. You never lose it. That's what's nice about these little pouches or gamma container or alpha container, which one ever one you got, is you keep those items. Now, if you were to say die though, and you had this inside of you, say the say the what was inside of your gamma container or your alpha container, and you died, that is a not found in raid. You'll know whether or not it's a found in raid from it being a little circle with a check mark here. That tells you that it was found in raid. With that in mind that if you die, it says you need to find the item in raid. It's no longer really useful for that quest. If it's a healing item, you can still use it, use it as healing, so there's no harm, no foul on that one. So, for today, we want to go to customs and try and collect either the Sailawas, shotguns, or just the scab kills. I'm going to start with that today. What I'm going to do is, for myself, I don't like bringing in the automatic items they give you. Now, they will always start you with the AKS, Commando, the MBSS backpack, with some BP rounds, and also a magazine. I don't like to do that because you're losing some really nice stuff there and I'd rather see if I can collect my own. Now you can drag this over here. This, I like doing it as a pistol run first and see what I can do from there. Move these over as well so I have some extra magazines. We're going to plop over the cheese. The splint I'm going to put in the gamma container and the bandage we're going to bring over. I like to bring in some extra ammo so this PST, this ammo here, if you double click on it it'll tell you it's a 9x19 which will work for this pistol here so bring that with us as well. The other cool trick that you can do that some people don't know about is that if you hover over the what we call cheese, it's an A12, which is for healing, you can click four on it. That's what I use at least, whatever feels comfortable. Or always put it onto your quick use down below. Now you can do four through zero, whatever feels most comfortable with, you can do that. Most can do that with our bandages, we'll put that as five. And just in case we do run out of healing, I'm gonna put this here as well. Now for today, like I said, I want to see if we can collect some items, get those scav kills. So let's head over to customs and see what exactly we can get done. And uh, maybe we'll push on to the next quest. And we have spawned in. Now when you first spawn in, you're going to spawn in either two different sides um, over by what's called Big Red or also known as the custom side. Or you'll spawn over towards like the checkpoint. This map is quite linear. It's either you spawn on this side or that side. It's a big line and that's all you're really, really working with. Uh, I do want to see if we can try to collect some nice keys or just random loot for now. So we're going to go check out these rooms here. You'll find coats like this hanging on top of racks all the time. Make sure you check every single coat that you come by. The coats have a chance to spawn keys. These keys are used for different rooms for you to go into. Whether it's a quest room or just a very high tier loot room, make sure you check them all because if you skip over one, there's a chance you're going to miss out on this key. Now, my plan was to kill a scab so we can get some bigger backpack and vest. So, we'll keep an eye out for those and try to kill them. Plus, we need to take them out for the quest. Again, make sure you use that middle boss button and click it in. That way you can examine it. But I would normally suggest this before you go inside of a raid. Make sure you examine all that the traders have available at that point. 
but you never really have to worry about examining those items again. Some I didn't do, but that's what I would suggest for you to do. We're going. Anything good? Pliers, pliers. Now, if it looks like junk, that's fine. Still grab what you can. Because at the end of the day, these items are actually really useful now since we have the addition of the hideout. Definitely take advantage of grabbing those items. Don't leave them behind. Do that. You may find out later down the road. Oh, that item I skipped over was very useful to me. Go through the backside of customs. And go check out the other blue shack and see what's in there. The other thing I would suggest too is there's a couple different websites that have attachments that have the maps on there. I will link those down below so that way you can see exactly what the maps look like, where the potential loots are for the stuff, and just overall knowing your surroundings. Best thing about this game is that it's not linear. There's a lot of different routes you can take when it comes to trying to complete your mission, which is either a quest, kill task, or just trying to get loot. So it's what's really nice about that, it shows you everything. And there's a lot of different places. Like for on customs, there's the dorms. It's it's a complicated thing, and it's a lot to go over. But we will go over it so that way you guys can get more of an understanding of it. For me, I'm just gonna keep the stuff I've got now. If I find a key, I will swap it out with something else in there. Zippo. Thank you. I do not need a zippo today. The nice thing about too about waiting before pushing farther into the map is that you allow what we call more geared or chads as some people are referring to them lately to get towards the middle of the map and let them do their thing. Sometimes pushing fast is not always the most guaranteed win. Sometimes sitting back and taking your time, looting, checking containers, it's a very valuable thing to do. Not only that, it also does work on your skills. Your skills are very, very important in this game because it works on strength, endurance, memory, and uh, memory, the bigger thing is about that is that the more you search things, the faster that gets leveled up, which means it, you know, the loot chance of what you can find is increased. Rare loot can be found. I'm gonna head over this way. See what we can find. Especially over in dorms area. Dorms area has what's called a marked room. That marked room is a very, very, well, it's, it's a very dangerous place to go because it has a high tier loot. You find some really nice items in there, so people fight over it. You can pretty much go through the middle of the map and not have too many worries but because that's where most players are going. And I saw a scav, I believe, so we'll see that. See if we can go take him out. Oh boy, being shot at. And we're load. We can go around. There's like three scabs right there. Come on, man. Go down. Try to bring the extra ammo, though, so that way you can reload. Down. There's still another scab somewhere. Before we go look for him, we're gonna take his items. Oh, not. Somebody over here shooting. I believe he's on the bridge, so we'll push up this way. Oh boy. Dead. Somebody was shooting over here. I'm not sure where he went, so... We'll leave it as it is for now. Let's go loot the bodies of, of the people that we killed. The scabs that we killed, not players. Here. Not the shotgun we were looking for, unfortunately. 
we'll just take everything other thing too is you can hold the alt button and left click that will move it to your slots right away if you can click control left left click that will move the item into the bag or even the, the rig that you're holding so that's a nice little important tip to, to make sure you check out so that way, just in case uh that you need that so a little tip. You know, especially for quickly grabbing the items it's a nice thing to do we don't need those knives we have ourselves a nice weapon sometimes people like to upgrade their weapons when they're on the standard accounts you're more welcome to do that i would actually probably highly suggest that and we're not going to take this i will take the taz just to take it because it's an open slot i'll just take it so we can have it for later and have these two on at the same time so i'm not gonna worry about grabbing those yeah that should be good now let's hang up for a minute let's get inside of a bush a little bit more protection here we're gonna load up this pistol round or pistol mag and reload and do the same thing this will up level up your mag drill which is you just basically reloading your weapon or your magazine so that we can uh, have more, more ammunition for later but nice skill to have is, and i believe it does increase the speed of it too later on down the road this here get this going not a bad shotgun to have though the mp153 is a nice powerful shotgun but for quest purposes not what we're looking for there's somebody over here we shot oh he's over there okay i believe this guy was rocking a hunter yes he was got a backpack too well, we will actually take that that's a little bit of armor there that check the tea bag weapons like this always right click them and check them because if they fold you can put them right inside of your backpack and take that well what you got we got a bandage i'll take an extra bandage just in case and just make sure if you need some space make sure you uh, leave a little bit of room the one thing too about your scav back or so for us it's scav vest or even the pockets if you don't have room and it happened with our pistol the actual magazine that you put inside the weapon because this area was all full for us it'll actually eject itself out and be thrown on the ground we were in the middle of a fight so i didn't really worry about trying to find it but yeah make sure to look out for that if you're really low on magazines what's going on possibly it's a sniper scav they do spawn up on top of that little little um, tower there, and also in the building back there you'll have a uh, scav spawn. Those are the sniper scabs. They, they spawn with a really nice rifle that you gotta be careful of because it will really mess you up. And it looks like doesn't look like he's actually there, so it's not them. Stick towards the trees. Obviously, you want to stay out of anyone's way at the beginning of the game because, especially right now, you're in a point where we're a little bit into the wipe and people have got some really nice weapons. There's a chance that you'll probably get taken out if you're not careful. Oh, I saw someone up there, but there's no one up there. We're gonna pretty much push to the gas station. I was gonna go check the dorms, but we're gonna leave that for later later down the road because it's a pretty dangerous place to go. Let's see. Seems clear for now. Now you do have to be careful of the gas station because the gas station has a chance to spawn in the scab boss, the Shala. The Shala is not too difficult to take on, but early game when you're trying to take them out, uh, you're going to have some difficulties. So you don't always have to fight them. If you see them and you don't feel like you're going to be able to take them on, don't worry about it. Just move on from there. Come up here. We got three of our five scab kills, which is good. We got a nice start going there. If we had a key, there's a nice medical spawn inside of the gas station here. But we'll have to, have to be careful. Maybe we'll get that key later down the road. It does look clear. There's a key that spawns right on that chair there. It's what's called the MES key. The MES key is used for a different room on the map called Interchange. So, need that key or anything for that room, make sure you grab that. It's a really nice key. We'll do an upgrade here, so we're going to move everything from this vest to this one. 
And again, just search it. If there's nothing else in there we may need. And we're going to move everything to this backpack as well. Now, should have done this the other way. Because this is an, another thing you can do. Which I'm going to do this now just so I don't forget to do it. Chunk, we need that for a quest. We're going to put a bag inside of a bag. Can't do that, so remember to do that. It's a nice thing to do. If we find something better, I'm going to take the knife as well. I don't think there's anything we need inside the gas station right now. Start heading out. Now for any scabs or players. Now you've got the hillside on uh, onto your left. You've got this little defilade right here. Scab right there. And then you've got the warehouse area down over there. You kinda have to pick your poison, see what would be the best place to go. Sometimes it's, you know, the road most travel is not the best road to take. We'll just say that. I will usually stick to the mountain range on our left, but because we are already by the gas station, I figured we'd We'll go that way. A big tip, I will say, for those that are starting out and need to get some money, or if you feel like you're getting low on money, remember that you can double click on or right click and press uh, inspect on the weapon, and it'll have different attachments that are attached to the weapon. Obviously, we have two right now, so we can't fit in any more spaces, so we will take it, pull it off, and put it in there. And that takes off all three spots. That's just a nice thing to have because it sells for a decent amount of money. Anything inside the tea bag? This is a uh, Tarcola. Okay, we'll take Tarcola. Also, another thing too, you, you probably want to do early on is work on your metabolism. You'll see down here in the corner here, you've got your water, you've got your energy, and you need to keep those up because if they go below zero, they'll start fading a little bit. Your vision is going to be really weird. So you want to make sure you keep that stuff at all times. The more you drink, the more you eat. Your metabolism will get leveled up and the slower it actually will go down. Which is a nice feature to keep in mind. And that's not going to be a good bag. Now we are approaching the checkpoint here. Up in that little tower in front of us is going to be sometimes a sniper scab. You do got to be careful of that. Because if you're not, uh, there is a chance that... Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, I, I missed him a lot. And he's down. Now we got a fracture, so our vision is going to be kind of off right now. But that was the last kill we needed. Get a pistol on him. I'm going to take that. Uh, let's see what else. I'm going to take everything he's got, pretty much. Okay, and we are hurt with a fracture, so we'll go to our healing. You can use just right click this, but if you have multiple, it's good to check out your healing menu. We'll drag that to the arm, and that will fix that uh, fracture there. And our vision in a couple seconds will get better. It just has a countdown for recovery. And then just start seeing a little bit better. Now, if you've got painkillers, you can pop those. That will instantly make your vision better. Uh, but if it's a fracture, say like on your leg and you're running, uh, you will still get hurt. It's, it's, it's fractured. It's not healed fully. This backpack's already been checked. Oh, actually. Right, we're going to check this real quick. Because this is a chance for the 114 key. Oh, we got healed this time. Now I'm going to say that's a decent amount of stuff to grab. Uh, I don't want to get greedy. Being greedy in this game, you could easily get killed from it. So we're going to head out here. Him out. I will, however, check the scab see what kind of weapon he had. Oh, and there it is. There's one of the weapons we needed. We're going to drop this. We're going to pick up his weapon. This was, this was a M3, which I actually need. So we're going to move this here. And throw away this knife. We're going to throw away the bandage. Put the health there. Back in there. This tea bag's going to get thrown on the ground. Because we need that for a quest. So it's good to grab it now rather than later. This helmet's not really good, the TK Fast. I would not worry about grabbing that. Uh, it's 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 just an imitation helmet. It's, it's not really, really good protection at all. That should be good there. We are going to get out of here right now. Because we need to get 
the exit. Those are really nice items that we've gotten. We've gotten the scav kill, so we're we pushed pretty pretty good ahead of the quest than I was expecting. Yeah, that was really good. Run all the way back here. This will be the normal exit that you would normally be taking. That's going to be the ZB, uh, what's it, the ZB1, uh, ZB1011. The ZB1011, this is the exit you're taking. Just keep an eye on the exit in case someone was following you or they're coming down. And like that, you were out. Okay, now let me come to the after raid report. I should also point out too, for those who may be curious how I dropped those items so fast. You can right click them and hit drop and it'll drop the item. I have a keybind set to you, which whenever I press U, it'll actually drop the item so I don't have to worry about having to right click or do extra buttons. I would take a look at your keybinds to see if you can set it something you're more natural with and use that versus having to right click, click the button. It's, it's an extra second that will save your life. Trust me on that one. We got some nice XP from all those kills. We got six kills in total. Again, this is just another aftermath report. Shows you how much money you've gotten, how many bodies looted, weapons looted, everything. They'll even tell you that the dealt damage that you did to players or even scavs, how much damage was absorbed by their armor. And then pretty much just the hit count and fatality hits, which a fatality hits is we killed six scavs. That counts up pretty well. That's going to get us all the way to level three, though, I believe. 4,100 XP. Yeah, we're going to hit that no problem. This will also tell you the actual XP that was collected. You eliminated six scavs, headshot, streak, all that fun stuff. Got that. Now, this screen is a little bit different. There's two different ways you can look at it. If you've got the healing in your actual stash, then it's good to not touch this menu. If you don't have any healing items, you have money, you can apply it and it will heal your character to full. For us, we want the XP, so I'm going to hit next since I have the extra healing. And we'll show that to you inside the actual stash. Again, there's different ways to look at this. If you're not worried about the XP from the healing, then don't worry about it. But every action you do in the game gives you some type of XP for the most part. Healing is the biggest thing outside of, out of raids because you can actually do it and still get XP. So since we have a ton of these uh, A12s, AI2s, we're going to just go over here, heal that. Bottom right corner, you'll see the healing, 26. And we'll just do that for all of them. Well, that's every single one. Your full health is 435. So make sure you check that out. 435 is your full healing amount. And we got a nice, a nice lot amount of uh, loot here. So we're just going to drop all the stuff. What I'm probably going to do, actually, I'm going to move all of this junk loot down towards the bottom. This doesn't include any attachments, but anything that looks like junk loot, we're going to move it down. I do believe that's it. Well, we'll put the hot rod down there because that's used for later. Attachments, I'll put up here because we'll most likely end up selling those. Taz, this is for quests, so we'll toss this down here as well. All these mags are topped off, and we actually got a secondary pistol because we already have that one. This guy will go right in there. Got our healing still, we got our extra rounds. Put this down here. The knife, we can. There's a couple things we can do with the knife. We can either save it for a quest down the line, which is a Punisher part. So I think it's Punisher part two requires the knives, but we don't need to worry about that now. We can just sell these and get them off the scabs later, a little bit closer towards the room or for the quest raid. Uh, let's see. Bandage we're going to keep. Going to keep this a, a, a AI2. Put that back up there. We got 30,000 rubles out of that, which is awesome. A lot of nice money to get there. And then we'll put the 3M body armor down here as well. That's a nice thing to have there. Now with the Tashanka, that's also going to be for a quest. So we'll put that down there. This is for therapist uh, later down the road. I don't remember the name of the quest, but it does show up soon. And this is something I'm curious on because I want to see if there is a stock available for the shotgun because that pistol grip is really nice for Gunsmith Part 1. I don't see it. What I'll do is because I, there's a way to get this as well. I am just going to remove this here and then we turn it in over here at prep or there'll be a turn key there. My recording for some reason turned off, but you would just click and turn in and give that over to prep or and he will take that and that will be part of the quest. Now, since we have all that done, I'm going to take in the setup we got here. I'm going to go, I think, to interchange because We've got for the tasks done, we've gotten debuts, first five kills done, and we've also got one of the shotguns. 
What I want to go do is look for Sailawaz. That's the next thing I want to work toward. Also, get a couple other nice things to, for down the road. The other thing we want to get is we want to go get some stuff for the hideout. Now, the only way that the med station is going to work is if we actually have some type of fuel for the generator. You're going to need either, well, I'll show you. It's either a 60 fuel container or a 100 uh, fuel container for this to run. And we also need to probably buy one painkiller at that point and we'll start that process though. So we're going to head over to interchange and see what we can do. All right, I decided to do this one at nighttime. Let's have the cover of darkness when we decide to. Now you do have the selection obviously of day or nighttime. So whichever you choose, just, you know, whichever you feel most comfortable with, go and do that. But for now, I just want to go in at nighttime and see if we can get in there without being seen. We are going to go for a place called Ollie. Again, I'm going to have the map down in the description so that way you can take a look through it and see exactly what we're doing. But we need to find the fuel container. And then beyond that, well, it's just going to see what kind of other gear we can get. There's a chance that obviously the scabs will spawn with shotguns and maybe we can get the last one for prep work. But I'm not too concerned about that because we're going to be going back to custom soon and I feel like I've gotten really good luck with finding them out. Even Factory is a really nice map for getting those shotguns too. Now there are a lot of spawns that spawn towards this direction so you have to watch out for all directions. Just in case that someone may be waiting for you to come through or well someone's come up right behind you. One towards the back of that sign, and also one that's just behind, outside that direct. But I do want to see if we can get some nice stuff to up, start upgrading the stash as well. Uh, for the hideout as well, except because there are some items you're going to need. Screws, bolts, like that are going to be needed. Not being seen. Down ammo. Yep. Got it fully loaded, which is good. Right through here is a good spot to check for fuel. It does spawn on all these shelvings here. And towards the opposite side of where we're going to be going as well. Nothing there, unfortunately. And you want to be careful, especially right there at that backside, because there's a chance for a player to be coming that direction. Got it, but we're dragged out. There we go. Well, at some point, hopefully, that will catch up to the server. If it doesn't, no big deal. Do the same thing here. Let's examine that just so we have it. Server's having some problems right now, but catching up to itself. Yeah. Bad. All right. You will find some lag spikes in this game. You have to kind of roll with it. Demo while we're searching. Drill? Drill right now. Maybe later I'll grab you drill. Check all these sides here. Another thing to also be looking out for is, is in here actually. I can't grab it. It's too too small of an item and I can't grab it. Along this wall here, also you're gonna have car batteries that will spawn. You're gonna need those as well for some quests down the road and also to upgrade the hideout. If you get your hands on those, make sure you take those and hold on to them. Any fuel whatsoever back here? Don't see any. But we do see another tube, so we'll take the tube. It's not really used for anything, but it is a good source of money. They sell for a good amount of rubles as well. Check behind here. There's going to be any full, which there is not. Careful of the back doors, because people come through there at some point. I don't see anything. Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna head for the computers. I'm going to head for these computer rooms here because there's some other stuff you can get from it as well. And I'm just going to go check them all. Now you'll need what's called a flash drive at some point for some of these quests coming up. So if you can collect it beforehand, we'll use the bonus. But 
They just spawn some nice stuff. They spawn cores, they'll spawn wires, capacitors, fans like this. We're just going to collect all the junk that we can, hold on to it all because it will become useful at some point. Oh, no, not at all. We don't want to get too greedy with this, we just want to take what we can, but not waste too much time. Take every piece of it. Okay. Now there's more computers on the opposite side. You can either go all the way around the hallway, or you can use this door. Go to the back here. Here. Then we've got some more computers back here as well. Keep in mind too, you could also try to do the other thing, which would be to close the door behind you. Just in case there is somebody that's going to be coming through here as well. You can kind of make it look like you were never here. Uh, the other thing you can do, which is sometimes worth it, which is keeping the door open. Because if someone is, say, coming through that back door there and sees all these doors are open, they may just pass by it because they don't, you know, they don't actually see something coming through. The DVD drives, I don't grab because they're not useful for anything. So I will leave that up to you whether or not you take them or not. But me personally, I do not touch them. I just leave them right there. I don't worry about grabbing them. CPU is worth a decent amount, so I will take that. Put that in the gamma container. I heard running for a minute. And then we got last set of computers on this side. Now, Ollie's got computers all the way through the front of it, too, so we will also go hit those up. But I want to stick to the back side first because I need to go and check for more fuel. There's there's a few more fuel spots, so we're going to look at that as well. Else? Servers are a bit laggy today, like I said, so don't mind the lag. Those over here. Nothing, okay. And every once in a while, just double check down here in the corner at your water and your energy. Just just double check it because there is a chance that it's going to be low and you need to find some food. If you get way too low, it will, we already talked about in the first radio, it will cause some problems for you. Other thing to keep in, in mind too is there's parts of the hideout that you can upgrade that do while you're out of raid. They will um, slowly but surely start regenerating your, your water and your energy. And the more you upgrade the hideout on those certain things, like I think once the food, the nutrition station, the bed, and a few others, uh, it will actually regenerate even faster the more you upgrade those those stations. Both of these, you have them. Tubes. I was hoping for some some uh, corrugated hoses. The corrugated hoses are useful because they are nice for upgrading things in the hideout. Which will actually be coming up soon, so maybe we'll get lucky in the next run, but this one not so much just yet. I have a feeling I wanted to go check the front of the the Ollie store first. If there's nothing, then we'll probably call it good, because we don't need a ton of stuff. We just wanted to grab some loot to have it. Scabs may have spawned as well, so at this point, when you're going up to the front of the store at this time, you want to be a little extra cautionary. More PCs to check. All the good stuff. Very cool. Uh, here as well. Caps, DVD, and fan. Now, I think I see something that... Oh, that's, that's just another tube. Say we'll take it, though. Tubes as well. Again, just double-check all of the, the shelvings. You just never know what you're going to end up getting from them. On that one. Looks clear on that one as well. A bit of sun flare there. There, I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was a shotgun being aimed at me for a minute. Was it? Oh, 
What's the time you will have uh, a scav with a, sh with a shotgun with a flashlight inside these mall at night times? Be aware of that. Take this as well. Go, always double check the pockets and also the backpack that the scav has. Because the reason why you want to do that is, is if there is, say, the money in there, you want to make sure you grab it. Or even sometimes some rare keys. There can sometimes be some rare spawns on the scab, so. Always double check them just in case. Since we got this rifle, let's we'll swap over to it. Let's see what we can do with it. I believe that's all that there is. See any other items. There's one more area that with computers that we're gonna check. Once we've checked that, we're getting out of here. It's dead. They want to say about the flashlights. Right there is the reason. Now it's not the shotgun we need, unfortunately. So, ooh, we need that. We're gonna drop the body armor that we're using. We're gonna take that one. Got a bigger backpack here too. Toss that inside of that backpack. Search that. Bring this with us. Now that magazine dropped out because uh, we were full up in, this, in our inventory, so it didn't come off of our stuff. But we don't need it. Not worry about. Not gonna worry about that at all. Nothing in the pocket. And now we're gonna go run back through here and check the computers. Now you need a minimum of 600 XP to not get a run through. Basically, a run through means. If you didn't loot enough stuff, kill anybody, or you just basically ran to the exit within a certain amount of time, it will give you a run through. That's what you want to avoid. Especially if it requires an in, a, in raid item like finds, you need to make sure you at least get a little bit of XP. You can stay inside the match for up to, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Now staying in the map for 10 minutes will automatically give you that. That's, that's something to keep in mind. You want to drop for this. Drop splint and we'll unload this. That magazine, toss the ammo in there. We'll just toss the extras as well. Fix those, grab that. And I do want both of these as well. So I'm going to drop Got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. So we'll drop one of those because we don't need that many. And I'm gonna risk it, and I'm gonna put away the the bandages. Throw them away. I'm gonna check the front of the computers only. See if there's a flash drive. There's not. Okay, that's that's all we need. We don't want to get any more greedier than we already have. And it, I would suggest probably halfway through this run that we have done, actually, I would say get out. I'm going to quickly do a run through since we're heading this direction to get towards the exit. Need flash drives. There's only two computers left after this point anyway. I missed two back there because we were fighting the scads, but there are two more computers at that inf information booth, so give that a quick look over first. This, nothing. And nothing. Okay. We are heading out of interchange. These are starting to spice up in here with grenades now. If you want to make less noise, just go back through the way that we came in and go around. Uh, I am just going to shoot this out and go through it. Glass, break it, and get out. Now, our exit is going to be one or two places with backpack. It's going to be railway or it's going to be what well, three technically it will be either railway uh emercom or it will be the vehicle exit until we've getting got the actual keys or get the hideout stash point for killer those are pretty much the main basic areas you can go now, that's what a backpack there is another one which is the hole in the wall or the scav camp scav camp is the one there but you got to bring a friendly scav to exit and I haven't really seen that done successfully in a very long time. I've only seen it once done correctly. So, yeah, we're not going to attempt that. Hole in the wall is in the back side of the mall. You can use that one, but you can't bring a backpack. You can only have a rig on. Okay. 
We're just going to make our way all the way through here. Now, there are stashes, which I will show you at a later date. But there are stashes that are located always in the back side of the going towards the railway. But because we're so full, I don't want to go through those. There's no, really no point for us to do that. But if you've got extra room, we'll show you those stashes at a later date. Because normally I don't have this much space like filled. So I will usually go check those out. But the items we have on us are actually really nice because we need them for hideout upgrades as well as some questing. So I'm happy with the, the gear that we've collected. The other thing I would quickly touch on is that the, the gear that you bring in or the okay, so the, the gear that we got from the first raid, if you really like love the gear that you got from that raid, and you're a little bit tense about losing it, don't don't put that in your mindset. That's what we call gear fear. Gear fear is the one thing that will stop you from really progressing this game. Because eventually you're gonna get killed in this game. You're gonna lose all that gear that you originally had. Don't let that put don't let that put you down. It's going to happen a lot, especially with learning this game. If you've got some nice gear that you think that's really nice that you could do well with, bring it with you. It will probably save your life. Guaranteed on that. Almost to the exit here. I'm surprised to say that we have not run to a single player during all this interaction, especially through Ollie. Ollie is a high traffic area when it comes to looting. So the fact that we didn't see a single person shocked me. But I will not say no. Won't say no and I won't complain about it. We start exiting. Typically just try to run back towards here. You're a little safer versus being out in the open laying down. And there you've completed your second raid. You got some nice stuff. Now, alternatively, you do not have to go to interchange. You can go straight back into customs and call it good. But for myself, I want to try to find the upgrades for the hideout and start on that process of getting the say the was. Fortunately, not getting the gas kind of pushes the back up a little bit, but it's okay. So level three, you can tell what your level is going to be right here versus having to sit through this lengthy process. It'll just tell you right away what level you actually are. But that was a nice little uh, pickup there. Not, not mad about that whatsoever. Oh, that was a very exciting round. Now, pretty much after every raid, if you got the space, try to clear everything out of your out of your inventory, get it into your stash, put it away, and call it a day for that time being. Nice thing is, about 90% of the stuff that we collected is actually going to be used for a quest. So we don't have to do crazy amount of stuff with the traders right now. Here. It's always nice though to collect it ahead of time. So like we've been talking about for a while, grab it ahead of time because you're going to thank yourself later and it's going to save you a whole bunch more time down the road. Don't need these. The Keck is used for some upgrades on the actual hideout for like creating items. So we're not gonna we're not gonna keep those for now because they are pretty common to find. Screws we're gonna take as well. Oops. That there for now. All this. This will be used for some type of stash thing. Thermals, thermostat. I'm actually gonna sell that. Just to make a little bit of extra money off of it. And 3M body armor will stick right here for now. Yeah, that will be pretty much everything we collected. We go over here, pull all these off, and we're gonna sell what all this stuff right here. I may keep the hunter for now because it is, it is a decent weapon to have. Now, for who we actually sell it to, therapist is a nice one to sell it to because you make some really nice money off about 90% of this. She sell, she buys for the highest on on tech um, versus selling it to actual flea market, which Actually, we'll probably sell you. Well, actually, people will buy this for more. But for traders, she'll buy this stuff for the most money. Grab all of this, sell that. We made 132,000 rubles just like that. Quick and easy. When it comes to selling parts from weapons, you want to first sell it to Skier, because Skier is going to buy these parts for the highest. Then you go after that to Mechanic. The Mechanic will buy these items for the other price that you're looking for. So, sell all that. The knives, since we're going to sell this for now, I'll get the knives later. We're going to sell these to Fence. He's the only guy that will buy them, so this will give you a little extra money. Now, you don't have to do that. You can hold on to those knives for a simple trade, and this is one right here. So eight of these A2607 knives will, will get you an MP5. So it is actually a pretty nice little upgrade right there from just holding on to knives in your stash. But 
Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to be the best place to end this episode. We'll actually end this off with handing in our first sailor ball, which is the one that we originally start with. This is not going to be for every case for everybody, but for us, that's what we're going to have there. In the next episode, we'll go over more ways to collect the Sailor Was, finish up the shotguns, and we'll move on from there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below about what you're excited about for this series, what you're excited about to learn. And also, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one.